Hello and welcome to the Wireless Watch podcast. This is our teaser podcast for our industry newsletter, News, Opinion and Consulting at rethinkresearch.info. That's our temporary domain for the moment. So head there to read more about what we're talking about today. It's just two of us today. I'm joined by my colleague, Alex Davis. Hello, Ellie. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, busy. But yes. Busy's good. Always busy. Uh, you've got some interesting stuff that you've looked at this week, which was a summary of a lot of the research that you write about every week, which is your stock tracker. Yeah. And you've divided that into two sections for our operators and vendors. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I thought it would be useful to look back at how how things have done, because in the little weekly article, I I'm always saying, oh, the operators are trending downwards. I thought, well, and also that the vendors are shooting upwards. And I thought, well, let's let's look back and like actually actually quantify that. So the yeah, I mean the the way it works is it's just playing around with the, the Google Finance API, uh, and then me playing around with an Excel file. Um, but yeah, it it makes for pretty grim reading when when you chart it out and then like do a bit of formatting. And yeah, for the vendors it's been it's been kind of enormous like there's been a average 28 percent growth through the past year and sorry yeah average 28 percent with nvidia topping the the leaderboard at 200 percent and uh poor old comscope um all the way down at the bottom like down 80 percent which is a bit rough and it's it, it's kind of more prominent if you look back at the the whole period so that's going back to like august 2022 and if you if you chart it there nvidia is up 630 percent you know an obscene number and it's it's all just um yeah ai kind of hype but unfortunately like comscope is also still down um 87 percent so it's it's not it's not going well for them is Um, there a bit of a um uh tension between you know, the the ones that are doing well are generally those with AI or chip c- capabilities. Yeah. And the rest of them who are really dragging the pack are our lovely, wholesome telco friends who aren't doing well anyway. Yeah, yeah. There, there does seem to be like a clear sort of divide where in the last year, like the top five is NVIDIA, Dell, MediaTek, Broadcom, Qualcomm. Number six then is AMD. And then number seven is HPE. So like two out of the top seven are these like it firms and the reason they're in the wireless watch dot tracker is because they have these ran focused services and a bunch of telco bits and bobs too and yeah the other five are all silicon slingers um and intel is like noticeably uh off the pace it, it's down it has a 0.75 percent uh, loss through the past year which isn't like super surprising but yeah S- silicon is is a safe bet I, mean, I guess that makes sense right because it's the it's the platform on which all this other stuff is is done and as as you were hinting towards yeah ericsson by comparison is number eight there it's up 19 percent through the past year and then nokia is down six and a bit six and a bit percent which yeah is, is sort of tied back to that that at and uh open ran story that we we covered a bunch knock here in in the last year view is something like 13th i won't try and count out loud on the podcast but yeah it's it's a a, you know a drift but then if you if you go back and then look at the 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 entire period uh knock and ericsson are like right next to each other Mm. and knock is down 29 percent ericsson is down 15 percent so yeah these two like tentpole vendors are yeah, they're they're charting downwards, and to some extent, yeah, the, the wireless bit of the stock tracker hasn't done very well, but the yeah the entire tracker is is up, you know, sixty percent on average through through the period, and yeah, twenty eight percent in in a year. Riding on Nvidia's coattails, yes. some of that good news. Yeah, I did do a couple of views where I took the I took the Nvidia. And the Comscope, like the the biggest gain, the biggest loss, took them out. And mm. yeah, the average didn't change much. I think it went from twenty eight to twenty five. Mm. So, well, that's useful to know. Yeah, it it didn't 
like radically shift the the view. I, I figured knocking a six hundred percent or out of the the whole period of growth would would be more substantial, mm. and it was. Uh, but it it comes down to the thirty seven percent gain, which is yeah, it's pretty great if if you're investing in these firms. Mm. And what's the story for the operator crew? Yeah, I, operators. I've sort of said it's like managed decline, which is a, is a phrase that is maybe more biting in the UK context. But the the sort of average like growth for the operators was a, a loss of zero point four five percent. And if you want to look for like a silver lining, they seem to be doing better in the past year. Uh, because if you look back to August 2022 and chart that whole period, it's a, an average of a 2.2% loss, which is, yeah, compare it to the vendors. And it's it's this kind of uh, tail wagging the dog scenario, right, where you would you would hope that the operators would capture more of the, the value. But but no, it's it's the vendors and inside the operators, there's there's some successes like you've got. Barty Airtel up 63% in the past year, and the venerable Deutsche Telekom's up 20%, AT&T's up 185 Korea Telecom's at 164 and then BT gives us that top five, that's 132 And there does seem to be a bit of a regional... Oh, is it regional? It, there's, it's notable that the bottom five is all outside North America and, and Europe. So... The worst performer is MTN, which is down 40% in the past year. CK Hutchison, which is trying to sell off bits of its portfolio, that's down 22.5%. Telcom Indonesia, which the sort of consensus seems to be that it's it's trying to do a soft bank. It's investing a lot in in other firms to try and yeah to to grow and it's not quite panning out. So there's a lot of kind of negative sentiment involved there. Zane down 20 percent and then america mobile just under 20 percent so like the bottom five like it feels like there's something of a geographical trend here where perhaps the the market views the the sort of developing economies as riskier bets and, and is therefore sort of down on them compared mm. to, to yeah, mm. north america west europe mm. yes these are share price valuations we're referring to yeah yeah yeah. uh, for reference um yeah interesting stuff and i also spoke to an operator this week i spoke to the ceo of proximus in belgium Mm. um who was just the most ceo of ceos he was this very polished belgian or frenchman i'm not actually quite sure where he was from and i hope he's not listening and i'll offend him in that but he was really chatty he gave me loads of his time and we chatted about what proximus is up to because they are one of the few operators who talk to me about turning into a techco without me instantly rolling my eyes and i say that because they do actually make money from software so they they have had a historical software business uh called bix bix was their wholesale business and they have sort of transformed that through some M&A into an international CPaaS business by uh, acquiring a company called Telesign in 2017 and acquiring another company last year called Root Mobile. So they are very keen on the CPaaS uh, business and they are doing quite well at it. So they are earning 30% of their revenues from this these international uh, revenue streams and the remaining 70 is from the domestic services and telco related businesses in Europe and so we just had a chat about that he talked me through what the goals are they're very bullish on uh, CPAS so hopefully they maintain their position in that market at the moment they are quite high up they're they're one of the top three or four providers by volume size by the amount of messages that they are involved in sending uh, they need to maintain that lead to to be a big player in this growth market. And then we also had a chat about telcos and his views on generally, you know, network APIs, 5G standalone. And there's plenty of stuff in there. And it was really interesting to pick somebody's brains in that position. Uh, 
for an hour to really get into what they're up to. Another thing they've been doing, which a lot of European operators are doing, which is uh, getting in on the idea of using their infrastructure for sovereign data and cloud products. So they all say, you know, you don't want, you want to use the hyperscalers capabilities and the Gen AI add-ons that you get with, you know, a Microsoft cloud option, but you need the security that you can get from using assets that a local telco owns in whatever country it might be where your data needs to remain. So he was also quite bullish that that would be a, a promising new avenue for them and, uh, Lots of other companies are doing it. I can't think of any names at the moment. I feel like I was writing about Deutsche Telekom doing this. Certainly yeah. somebody else in uh, Central Europe. So yeah, I think that we'll see more of that um, from from our European providers. Yeah, how how kind of panicked was the tone? Because oh, this is like classic sort of diversification. Mm. And yeah, uh, Proximus has been doing this for quite some time. So mm. it's it's not... It's not like a a fire sale or like trying to trying to plug plug holes in a sinking ship. Like it's been doing this for a, a good while. But yeah, it was what was what was the the outlook for the rest of the industry? Did you, did you see pick anything up on that front? Well, we talked about we talked about the transition to being a techco, and he did admit, you know, he can do this because they were the incumbent operator in their country. So they have a network of contacts and an offices and business connections globally. And that's why he can grow a software business, uh, which is a good point because I think the point is, it really is only those those operators with those incumbent routes that have the easy option to, to kind of capitalize on a pre-existing asset. And as we've seen, there are operators like BT in the UK that haven't been able to do that and are selling back their assets in their sort of business and enterprise units. So uh, I guess what I'm saying there is there's a small pool of operators who have a chance to do this and some of them have already messed it up. So <laughs> it doesn't work for everyone. Um, hmm. I hope it works for them. I think it's it's m a that's worked for them and that is so far profitable yeah mm. yeah i mean there's there's only so much growth you can get on the consumer side especially in like the benelux region mm. and yeah it, it's not like a, a an enormous market where you can yeah you can squeeze profit margins and then reinvest that the yeah. pressure's on right and yeah the european sovereignty angle is always a bit fraught uh i i remember that that apple intelligence reaction from uh yeah the, the ec mm. heads and and yeah there's this determination to make europe important on the global stage and if we if we bought i mean like the G, gdpr regulations have not been particularly popular mm. and they've been difficult to work with and where you know it's hard to quantify whether they've actually been quite good but if you then start throwing in this kind of arbitrary distinction that yeah this data must reside in this country it's very important it stays in this country it's mm. more secure if it stays in this country then then yeah you you know, opening up a can of worms i think there's a lot a lot more headaches in there yeah, for the people managing the data, but for the people selling data security products, it's br it's great. Yeah. Finally, they get to um, make some money out of the thing that's been causing them a headache for the last five years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we'll wrap it up there. But as a reminder, go and read all the stuff that we've been talking about and look at some of that data and those results that Alex put together at rethinkresearch.info. And we will see you all or... We will be back again next week. So that's bye from me. Cheers, Ellie. Bye-bye from me. <laughs>